Hello there everyone, this is I am Mark 3 and welcome to this week's little mini-series. Yes indeed. And welcome to a bit of an odd one, a bit of a first for the channel. Yes. For the first time I'm doing videos and it is, um, it's actually a flash game. Hmm. This was suggested last week to me by Cannibal. And this is a game called Mars Colonies. Yes, indeed. Mars Colonies. Let's just click the button. This is an RTS slash colony builder hybrid. As I said, it's a flash game. So just type this into any old search engine and you'll find it on like a dozen different places, absolute minimum. So, you know, that's, it's all over the darn place. I, I can tell you, however, that this game was, as soon as it comes up here, Load for me, please. Don't leave me hanging, Mars Colonies. Here we go. Sponsored by Positech Games. And also has an adverse to democracy too. Gratitude Zank Battles and two others I wasn't fast enough to read. <laughs> right. Uh, I decided this was interesting. I wanted to do it. Because I'm not sure how this is going to play out for the channel. Well, as a mini-series, I should probably say. can be a bit slow-paced sometimes, but this is... Um, a fairly decent colony style game and it crossed my radar like a few years ago actually I found it a few years back I played it to completion because I was looking looking for a game like this and honestly I spent a few nights staying up way 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 too late just you know just whiling away my time playing on this thing so yeah what can I say when I get into the zone I really get into the zone so let us begin this was suggested to me by Cannibal, by the way, or Little Me, on the Discord. So, let us begin on mission one. Landing. We think it just landed on Mars, and the colonists have already started their research, but they won't last long on Mars without food supplies. Objective, build personal module, water pump, hydroponics, power plants, and then produce five food in the hydroponics. So really, this game is like, um... Oh, wait. If I'm going to do this properly, I have to do the uh, stuff, don't I? Hello, Commander. From now on, I'll be your assistant. Don't skip it. <laughs> what? Every <coughs> Everyone does that, right? So don't even think about it. I'm watching you. But the skip button's right there. It's so tempting. My job is to receive messages from Earth and let you know what they have ordered us to do. So yes, it's kind of an easy job. I'll just sit here and never mind. Let me help get used to your interface. First of all, this is the amount of research points you've got up here. Or science, if you like it more. If you like it more, I would like it more. I like science more. Science, yes. You receive research points. Science, when colonists research blue minerals from the surface of Mars. Um, this game does try to be a little bit humorous, I recall, in the um, in the text descriptions. But the game is, some, in some ways, is a little bit simplistic. In others, it's a little bit lacking. Like, there's no sandbox mode. There's no randomly generated maps. All you get is the missions. So there is a slight restriction there. These minerals main reason Earth decided to start colonization of Mars. Scientists discovered the minerals after a mysterious Mars break in 2023. That can only mean one thing. Zombies. <laughs> no, not really. You can spend science to build structures like personal modules, oxygen stations, and so on. The more science you have, the more structures you can build. Also, here you can hire more colonists for science, of course. And here you can manually set jobs for your colonists. So everyone, by default, when you you hire in from three calibers of colonists, the better ones are more expensive. Jobs you can restrict them to doing certain tasks, that kind of thing. Here you can order resources if you have a problems producing them, but keep in mind that it's pretty expensive. Yeah, and also increases over time. Every time you do it, it goes up. Colonies food and oxygen, obviously. Food is produced in hydroponics, and oxygen is produced in all in an oxygen station. Control center already has some food and oxygen to give colonists some time to build all necessary buildings. So yeah, you start off with a limited amount, but it basically starts you off with very little most of the time. So not enough food or oxygen, colonists will leave a colony. To build a structure, you need metal and components. 
Many structures require energy to work. Some need water. Are you listening? Yes, I'm even giving you a voice, my good sir. Okay. This indicator is also important. It shows the number of corners you have and the total number of corners you can have. So, five out of four. To increase the total number of corners, build personal modules. Each personal module houses three corners. It's something like a calendar. It shows how many years... It's... This is... It's, a, it's something. Well, point at it. It shows how many years, months and weeks have passed since the colony landed on Mars. You can click on a colonist to see his name, his perks and his needs. Also, you can fire a colonist if you want to hire a better one and don't have spare personnel modules. That's it, I suppose. Let's see if Earth wants us to build something. Aha! Your first mission is to build some buildings to help your colony last longer. And don't forget to connect all the buildings with pipes and cables. Which also requires science and materials, by the way. Um, oh, and other thing. You can control the flow of time. Just hold S on your keyboard to see. Ooh, that's something I missed. Um, it's, that isn't in the interface, but... Yep, if I hold S, it goes faster. Okay, that is very good to know, and it doesn't tell you otherwise. Oh, dear. Don't ask me how it works. They never told me. Let's do it. Close. I hope you're happy, buddy. I just went through your entire introduction. Okay. First off, let's get started. Ugh. I want to build a personal module. This is my radar showing me underground deposits and, and what I know is where. So I put that down there. Cost me science and material. And then someone has to go over and build it. I'm seeing a bit of frame drop. That's because I'm rendering something in the background, actually. So I, I'm trying to record this while something else is being prepared. Bit of a mistake, so... For the parts after this, I won't be doing that. Still. Basically, the mission is complete as soon right. as you get the objective sorted out. So that's what I'm going to do. Now then, I've just put down the water pump. Oops. Don't, don't right click. This is a flash game. So, you see these nodes here? This is like a geoscan area. It reveals what's under the ground. And this means there's water here. And a water pump will output more if there's more stuff under the under, sorry, under the initial four, um, the bright blue four where the building is. It doesn't care what's under the stuff to the side. The slightly larger radius is the build restriction area. So I, I can't put it, I can't build something like um, that because it's overlapping too much. You can do diagonals, but that will block travel between these things. So you have to watch out for that one. Now, personal modules completed. I can hire two more people, so I should do so. Let's see. We've got 40, 70, and 110. So, almost double the costs for each tier, but it does affect things. You see these blue traits? Blue traits are good, right? And red traits are bad. So, red means they're worse at something. Blue means they're better at something. They also randomly generate and you can't cycle through, so you have to hire someone to get a new one for that particular slot. So if I was to hire Sebastian Smiley here. Eagle Eye. Better accuracy. Good for fighting. However, it's lazy. Sleeps more. Rookie. Does less damage when fighting, so that more or less counteracts Eagle Eye, actually. And Clumsy. Slow construction speed. So Sebastian is a really bad one. Uh, Lino, veteran, damage increased by two. I don't think I have any hostiles on this map. Caffeine, coffee mania, gets tired more slowly, but is myopic, so very low accuracy, and slow at building. But, um, he, he doesn't sleep much, so that's tempting, but that's only one positive for a 70. Then Joe Gilder, he's a, a, he builds faster, he's got the extra damage, and he requires less sleep, but he can't mine as quickly. He's, a, apart from the, the damage one is still useless to me, but the other two are actually pretty good, so he can build. He can't mine, though. The problem is that to get more science, I need people to mine. So, I'm just going to hire Sebastian. And, oh, look, Fabian is really bad in general, but he's faster at mining. Hire him. I said hire him, done it. There we go. Right, and now we're full up, so we can't hire anyone else. And the moment you hire people, it just um, it drops down here, as you can see. And that was a big frame rate drop there. Yeah. I can't even run flash and recording Ready software work. when I'm rendering something. Good to know. So don't worry, this will be better in the next part. Okay. Time to lay some energy cable. 
This connects to my available power sources. Right now my command center provides a bit of power. It's also powering my uh, metal. And it needs to connect to the squares of this color. So any building that requires a resource will have a, a colored square which shows you what it connects to. So I just need to lay this out here. Oops, let me do that. Nope. There. I accidentally need to cancel the few. Stop right clicking, fella. There we go. So they will now go and build this. So every time the colonists have to go and collect the material and bring it to the construction site, and then they will work on it to lay whatever it is that's required. So I've got the, the um, water system, which will cost me two, three power, but it produces two water per pip. It says plus two on the tooltip, but it's plus two per pip on that stuff that was underneath the surface. So, it'll actually give me eight water. So yeah, there we go, plus eight water, plus three power. I can produce a hydroponics for two power and three water. I need a hydroponics to go ahead and give me the materials to finish this particular level. So I'll put that there. Notice, by the way, that this also has requirements of water and food. So I will lay the power line just up here. So, lay it there. And it needs the water. So, I didn't hook up the water pipes. The pump is producing water, but there's nowhere for it to go, and it, you can't store it. But I will lay the water pipe along the grid, just like the power line is. So, that will double it up, and it will supply water straight into the hydroponics. So, there we go. Now, in the interest of getting this done a little bit faster, um, and also because it's an objective. I'll hold S to speed it up a little bit. Again, apologies for the uh, slight, slight, slightly variable frame rate that's going on. There we go. So that will get built and it'll start to produce the food, but the objective says I need a power plant. So I need to get a power plant involved in all this business. Also, by the way, um, you can put down personal modules pretty much willy-nilly. They aren't as restrictive as the other stuff. Like, I can put one here right next to the dynamo if I want to. And I don't mind doing so. Just as soon as the hydroponic gets done. Are you done? Construction complete. There we go. Done. So that's now operational. However, I've only got one power. To speed up my objective slightly, I need to build the power plant, so I might as well just slap one down. Okay. I'll put one there and hook it up to this. So this is the start, first mission, it gives me plenty of materials for the most part. But that's the power plant, and with the power plant and my excellent supply of water, I can go ahead and build an additional hydroponics, which I will place down right here, just for convenience, and to reduce the amount of cable I need to lay. There we go. Because of course, since you have to pay for the cables, you might as well try to be as frugal as possible with it, yeah? Sometimes it's useful to have things stretched out across the map, but for the most part, you don't have to worry about it. God darn phone. Sorry about that. I just murdered the phone call. <laughs> uh, I wish people would stop calling me. I really do. Anyway. You can tell this is a slightly informal session, can't you? Especially since I was trying to do it while re uh, rendering a different video. Yes, so there we go. We have our second hydroponics bay up, so that's two producing. We also have our Im all important power plant, hydroponics, water pump, personal module, and we are now producing food, so we just have to wait for that to complete. Also, I laid a bit of extra um, water cable, sorry, water pipe there. D didn't need to do that last pipe there. But you can see the little dots flowing around, showing you where things are coming from, where things are going to. So we can see that it's all functional and operating. And honestly, this game, that kind of covers the basics of it. So now I just have to run this colony and allow it to finish. Because all it cares about is finishing the list of objectives. And as soon as you do that, you finish the mission. There's no bonuses, there's no score, there's no points. Just do what you're told, and then you can move on to bigger and better things. 
So I'm just waiting for these hydroponics to finish their work. Which is where, why that S to speed up is a very useful thing. And there we go. That is everything. Ta-da! Rocky! Complete mission one. Good job, Commander. Let's contact Earth for a new mission. Mission accomplished. All right. Now, move on to the next mission. Here we go. Da -da. Mission 2! This isn't a crowd yet. You may have noticed that 3 or 4 colonists is not quite enough to effectively control a colony. We need more colonists here. Objective. Expand the colony to have 15 or more colonists. Right, good day, Commander! What's next? Continue. Yes. This time we'll invite 15 colonists to our colony using this nice button. So, even though it told us about it last time, it's telling us again. Just to make sure that we get the point. This is going to be fun. Until they start complaining about food and oxygen. Yep. I know that feeling. I hate it when they're complaining. So we're going to make this a convenient place to live and work. Don't forget that colonists need personal modules to live in. Control center can house four colonists and personal modules can house three. Do the math. I hate math though. I really do. In this mission, you need to use geo radars to find metals and water. Don't forget to build a metal extractor and component factory. It may be that you will need much more materials than you have. BTW. The abbreviation there. By the way, you may have noticed, already noticed this button here. It's for colony ranks. It's like leaderboards in computer games. Loading error. Try again. <laughs> That's useful. Right. Briefly, it's a list of promising new colonies all over Mars. Yeah, I know. If you want to participate, then be sure to send your rank rating before the end of the third year from the day of landing. Uh, hey, do you know what time it is? Uh, no. Well, okay, never mind. Good luck, anyway. <laughs> right. Good on you, buddy. Okay, close that. Oh, dear. So let's take a look around the map really quick. Um, okay, this is our first encounter with hostiles, by the way. But yeah, there used to be an online leaderboard thing, but I think because this game was uploaded to different places, and because it's also fairly old, it's been around for a while now, it's um, likely the ratings have just shut down. Also maybe because this is not running on its uh, native site. But yeah, this is a Crazy Colonist Hovel. I can click to target it and it will periodically spawn Crazy Colonists, which are a basic enemy. They just wander around the map and sometimes they will get too close and start shooting at your people. And your buildings, by the way. So if you build something too close or they just wander your way, they can cause some damage and some harm. And your colonists will fight back. So any colonists nearby will counter-attack. So if one of them wanders up, nearby colonists will start shooting at them. So that is the um, combat side of this particular game in a, in a nutshell. The game does describe itself as having a bit of an RTS element, but it's actually really basic in that regard. You can't control your units beyond this thing where I click on it. If I click up, I can set this thing as a target. You can only set one target at a time. And when you've got a target active, all available colonists, once they complete their current job, will charge in and try to attack it. They'll attack anyone nearby that is uh, trying to shoot at them, of course. They'll defend themselves against the face colonists. But their object objective is to kill the target structure and, you know, just remove the danger to the colony itself. So, so they'll kill off the crazy colonists. Notice the third one has just appeared there. And then they'll batter on the structure until it goes boom. At which point it will be removed permanently from the map. So it'll it'll make this colony safe. So to put it mildly. However, I am also afraid that I am all out of time for this particular one because we are just passing the 20 minute mark now. So I'm going to call this particular part there. This has been Mars Colonies, ladies and gentlemen. My first time recording a flash game on this channel and I have learned that even though it's just a flash game I cannot render a video in the background while doing this because the demands on my system from the rendering software are still too great so hooray for that <laughs> and the further four parts for this mini series will not be done while rendering something so they will not be the frame rate drops and it will definitely run smoother so yeah thanks for watching
hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll catch you all some other time, where we will proceed with Mission 2. Yeah, see you all later.